In this lesson, we'll continue our review of reading test seven, section one. We're now in the fourth passage, and this is the dual passage. There will always be one dual passage, passage one and two. A good technique, in my opinion, is to read each passage independently. Once you've read passage one, stop, and then only find the questions that deal with one. Once you've found all the independent questions to one, then you read two for the first time and find the independent passages questions for two and at the end there'll be what are called compare and contrast where you're comparing one and two and you do those at the end the reason i recommend this you don't have to do it but by reading an independent passage answering questions referring back to the text a few times you really develop a much better idea of what it's about and then when you read two you can see there are differences and by the way it's always going to be the dual passage on the same subject but there will be i'm not saying they're opposite but there'll definitely be some distinctions and, and different interpretations. Same subject though. And by the way, this is also the passage on the founding documents or the great global conversation. There's always one of these where there's some type of archaic passage, old passage that uh, in this case we see it was is published in 1840. It's always persuasive, so it's argument, it's an argument and lots of really bulky, archaic language. So let's read just the reference information for one. It's adapted from Alexis de Tocqueville, Democracy in America, Volume 2, originally published in 1840. Again, we're just going to stop. We're only reading one. Now, I assume you've read it. A good technique, though, is to really kind of understand what it's about to see if you can summarize it. So he starts out, there are differences between men and women. You want to try and get his position because we know these are always a persuasive essay when we have this this founding document and so let's see there are people in europe so i'm like around 15 who confounding together confusing putting them together the different characteristics of the sexes of man and woman they in europe would make man and woman beings not only equal but alike they would give to both the same functions impose on both the same duties and grant to both the same rights they would mix them all things together it may readily be conceived that by thus attempting to make one sex equal to the other, both are degraded. Here's his position. It's, he doesn't believe they should be completely equal. And he does mention earlier, again, I hopefully you've read this, where he, he does advocate that women deserve more rights, but he doesn't, he doesn't want them to be exactly equal to men. So if you can understand that, that's really, I think, going to help when you answer the questions. And again, hopefully you've read this on your own. So let's start with the questions. We're only doing passage one. And question 32 is a vocab and context. What does raise? I mean, raise is a pretty straightforward word. So usually it's, it's like maybe a secondary meaning. Let's take a look in line nine and try to predict what raise means in the context of the passage. And so here's raise. I'll read a, read a little above for context. I believe that the social changes which bring near to the same level, the father and son, the master and servant, and superiors and inferiors, generally speaking, will raise woman and make her more and more equal of man, but. And so here, raise really means to, to increase her status, right? Some type of word will give her more of a more rights. So let's take a look at the choices. Raise, it means to elevate, elevate her status. So that wasn't too difficult. Let's take a look at 33. And, and again, whenever we're doing these questions, scan down at the rest. The next one, this is a two-part question. And so we are looking for evidence. We know the evidence is bound. It's a pretty short range between 15 and 29, right? That's the first and the last. Tocqueville implies that treatment of men and women as identical in nature would have what consequence? We kind of read this. Again, you, you almost can predict this. Let's just go and find specifically where he says if they should be treated identically. And I think I read that earlier. All right, it may readily conceive that by thus attempting to make one set to make one sex equal to the other, both are degraded and from so preposterous a medley of the works of nature, nothing could ever result but weak men and disorderly women. So he's saying this is not the way nature intended, and it would just here's the result, they'd be degraded, it's weak men and disorderly women. And so it's really around twenty two to let's say twenty five right it is C this is the evidence and it would, he's saying that it would make them both weak we don't see weak but we see both harmed and this is just another restatement so the answer is B and I think we have one more question right 53 this is still in passage 1 so this is another vocab in context like number 32 what does dominion mean so let's take a look at 53 it's the end 
of actually check that 53 is already in passage 2 and so this is when you would read 2 for the first time okay so we know the position of de Tocqueville, he's saying that women deserve more rights, but they shouldn't be identical. You can almost see where this is going. Two is written by Harriet Taylor Mill, enfranchisement of, enfranchisement of women, right? To, to be enfranchised means they have like the rights to vote, they have full rights. Originally published in 1851, as United States and European societies grew increasingly democratic during the 19th centuries, debates arose whether freedoms enjoyed by men should be extended to all women. And so, again, hopefully you've already read this, but some of the key points here is she's saying that, let's see, mankind, well, if you read a little bit above, it's two persons could hardly cooperate in anything, right? That's how it used to be, or meet in any amicable relationship without the law's appointment that one of them should be superior. She, this is the way it, it's been. Men have always had more rights mankind have outgrown this state and all things now tend to substitute as the general principle of human relation a just equality instead of the dominion of the strongest and there's that word dominion instead of having more power right the men the men and women should be equal and so what does dominion mean that was the question actually i just saw for 35 so women instead of having the men instead of having dominion over women they should be equal and and it really just means that supremacy you want to be careful because a looks tempting omnipotence means like all powerful but you really want to avoid what i call extreme choices and supremacy is just a better choice and let's see we're going to do these two and we'll stop another two-part question number 36 and 37 into mill most strongly suggests that gender roles are resistant to change why so we want some evidence that the gender roles have have been resisted they've opposed it and this is you're really just looking for some clue where they have opposed it and so and as to why as well so let's take a look and again hopefully you've read this but when you're skimming through it you really have to sort of look for, that's really a key word. You're looking for some evidence that they've really opposed it. So, but all relations that between men and women being the nearest and most intimate and connected with the greatest number of strong emotions would sure be the last to throw off the old rule. So that's sort of an indication that it's coming and receive new for in proportion to the strength of a feeling is the tenacity, the tenaciousness, the unrelentingness with which it clings to the forms and circumstances with which it has even accidentally become associated. And so here's really the key here, the old rule, in proportion to the strength of a feeling, it's tenacious, it clings to the forms and circumstances with which it had, sort of the way things were. And so you're not gonna find this language, tenacity and clinging, but this is another paraphrase question. And the answer here is, that the matters are deeply entrenched, clinging with tenaciousness to the form of the past, and that was in 58 to 61.